Today is an exciting day, and you know why? We got a new gas grill. Anytime new gas grills show up, I kind of feel like not tooting my own horn, but if there's anything I'm better at reviewing at, nothing I'm better at, I'm, not, I'm wording this wrong, I don't think there's anything I'm better at than reviewing a gas grill. Right, Tate? Yeah. Is that my forte, you think? Sure. Yeah? You think so? Yeah. All right. All right. New gas grill showed up. We have the brand new Weber Summit. This thing I've been waiting for for years. They renewed the entire Genesis lineup last year. Finally this year, they gave the Summit a little love. We're into high-end gas grills. That's what we care about here at Embers. In fact, we're gonna actually cook a steak or broil a steak and actually see if it works. And I'm really excited to review this. Let's get going. So this is the new Weber Summit. Now what I'm really curious about is how's it gonna hold up against the competitors? How's it gonna hold up against a Napoleon Pro 665? How's it gonna hold up against a Broil King? Um, probably even a Blaze in this price range. Uh, we gotta put them to the test, so we got a lot of side-by-side -side reviews coming soon. This is the basic model. Now when I say basic model, what I mean by that is there are smart grills coming. Now apparently, their smart grills are gonna have some really cool new features. I don't think it's like the smart technology that I roasted that was on the Genesis. Um, this apparently is gonna have a better upgraded smart feature. So that review is gonna be coming soon of the smart grill model, we just don't have it yet. Don't forget guys, if you're in the Denver, Colorado area, you come to our showroom, check out all of our gas grills, Weber, Napoleon, uh, Blaze, outdoor kitchens. If you need help designing an outdoor kitchen, we can help you with that. Um, essentially, we do everything with gas grills. We're your source for gas grills, so hit us up. If you're not local, give us first stab at the business. If you're shopping for a gas grill and you like what you're learning in these videos, give us first shot at it. We certainly appreciate the business. Subscribe, do all the things. All right, let's, we got that business out of the way. So, one thing that I already love about this grill, before we even review the grill itself, is one of my biggest pet peeves with Weber, if you've watched my videos, I've really kind of drilled them a little bit on some things. All right, one of the things I hate, as an owner of a barbecue shop, my job is to educate consumers, all right? And if we confuse the consumers with way too many products and way too many SKUs where they can't do their own homework, you are losing them already. And Weber used to be notorious for, they'd have like 40 Genesis models. And it's like, what the heck is going on here? Ridiculous. What I love about this launch is it's one size, all right, big. You get one size, big. And you basically have two color choices, black or stainless steel. So options are really, really simple. They have a built-in option without the side shelves. It's basically, a cart without side shelves and casters. Um, so this review would apply to both. So even though there is a built-in option, it's really two models, black or silver. Super simple. And I love that. I love that they simplified the shopping experience for the consumer. All right, should we actually get into the grill itself? Uh, let's start from the ground up. So we got casters. These casters, you know, we wheel grills around all the time in the showroom, probably a lot more than you're going to at home. So we pay attention to casters because they break a lot. Uh, they seem pretty good. We got a brake on the front and back. Both swivel, let's, or the, the two front left and right. And then the backs. So all four casters swivel. So I do like that. And it does seem to move around pretty simple. So it's got fairly good casters. The car itself, um, they did upgrade soft closed doors. So you can see we have that now comes in propane or natural gas. So what's cool with the propane is uh, Weber, they always have their little propane measurement, which they've put right here. And you can see we're actually not that full. So we'll see if we can get by. Uh, they have this little flimsy little divider in here with a little shelf. It's not bad, it's not nothing you know great, nothing to write home about. And then our grease trap here, let's see here. So this pulls out. It's not bad. 
it's gonna fill up here. The only thing I don't love is, unless this is just sitting in there wonky, I'd like this flat because your people are notorious for not emptying these. So it's obviously gonna fill up and overflow on this end and be empty on this end. So you're gonna have to change this out a lot more frequently than if it sat flat like that. That's, that's not a huge deal. I'm not super mad at that, but um, I would have liked, that, liked to see that flat, but not bad. Soft closed storage drawers, they seem pretty solid overall. Personally, I'm a big fan of the black over the stainless, and I'll tell you why. We will do our famous scientific Weber test, and their baked on enamel is supposedly scratchless. Let's see. $4,000 grill. You ready, Chris? That's it. Should I? Do it. Oh, no. Just kidding. Perfect. I mean, it's just smudgy. So that's personally why I like the black. I go with black all day. All right, now let's talk side shelves. So Weber gives you oversized side shelves, which is great because you have plenty of storage. The downside is they are not retractable. And this grill is already really big. So it's not easy to store away. Now, usually if you're doing a grill this big, you don't really need retractable side shelves anyways. So that's, again, not the end of the world. They're definitely like a little chintzy though. But let's see how big much space you need for this big mama. 72 inches, so it's no joke. And then over here, oh, we get these little, these little hookies for our tools. That's kind of nice. Again, nothing great. Let's look at the back of the grill. So fully enclosed cabinet, again, a little flimsy for $5,000, $4,000 grill, but not terrible. I don't love this. So this is the igniter for our rotisserie. And I'm guessing it's on the outside like that because it, uh, for heat. And it just, it doesn't look awesome. And I feel like, like here in Colorado winters, if you're not covering your grill, that could become a problem with that igniter. Again, not the end of the world, especially cause you're not really gonna see that if it's up against your house or something, but um, could be better. All right, now our side shelves. We have the patented Weber side burner. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, this thing is a piece of junk. I mean, this side burner, everyone's like, I never use my side burner. And it's like, well, yeah, because this is what your side burner is. Of course you don't use it. I won't either. It's just, it's not that useful. You know, regular, just simple BTU side burner. Oh, what the heck? It's just not that helpful. If, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know I'm a huge, huge fan of uh, infrared side burners, but um, this, this is a piece of junk, this side burner. So not my favorite feature, never has been in any of the Webers, and this still holds true. I would have liked to see an upgraded, better side burner in the Summit series that's specific to the Summit. You like to do your corn? My corn. I don't know if this side burner is going to cut it, boiling corn, to be honest with you. Or you just put it right on the burner? Yeah, I sear it. You sear it? I sear the corn. You sear it with just a burner? Uh-uh, I don't think so. All right, we made it to the lights. So Weber, it's really hard to see in here, but we have fully integrated lighting on our knobs. That is an upgrade, so that's nice. So it looks like we have one, two, three, four, five made burners. And then this is our sear zone, which we'll talk about on the inside. So we have basically six burners inside the grill and then our side burner equaling seven burners in total. All right, you guys ready to get to my favorite part of the review? Should we get under the hood? All right, I haven't even dug into this thing yet. You ready? Brrr. Let's check it out. Boom. All right, so you can see this mama's huge. So lot, lot taller hood, and that has a lot to do with our rotisserie burner, which we'll talk about in a second. Now, if you've watched any of my other grill reviews, I always hate it when like this spit rod is sitting way down here. Now this is mounted fairly low, but we have a lot of space in here 
to, to work with, which is nice. So let's just start disassembling it. So here's our warming rack. Now what's cool, it looks like we got layers or adjustability to our warming rack. So we can go lower, looks like. Well, maybe I'm wrong. No, we can go lower, can go in the middle. And then, so we got multiple layers and it's pretty good size. So this is definitely handy and useful. Now, as you know, I'm not a fan of where the heck do you put these? And no one really has a great solution for that. I'm gonna put it right next to these golf clubs. By the way, if you haven't checked out our golf channel, this whole side of our showroom is gonna turn into a, an entire standalone golf store. It's gonna be awesome, so check it out. All right, we got our spit rod. This doesn't, looks a little more heavy duty. I don't love that we don't have four prong forks. I think we could have a better fork system, huh? Oh yeah, so you're right. These two prong forks do probably store a little bit better. You're right. And then what's really cool is let's see if you could store it with the forks. I noticed back here when I was walking around the grill, let's check it out. Maybe if we put that on the other side. No, you can't store it with these on here, but you can store your spit rod right here on these hooks and then put your forks away somewhere else. This isn't bad. I've seen heavier duty spit rods, but what do you need a heavier duty one for? I mean, they're not gonna break or anything. Let's set that here, because we're gonna gut this grill. Oh, cool. Looks like we get an integrated smoker box. This is a lot bigger than their other ones. So there's our smoker box and fill it up with wood chips. Probably some smaller charcoal. Pe pine needles, sure. Pellets? Yeah. yeah. Bark? Yeah. Briquettes? Briquette charcoal? Yeah. That's probably the best charcoal. Hickory? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fruitwood? Ch like cherry? Cherry. Yeah. Apple? Mm -hmm. Pecan? Mm -hmm. Peach. Walnut? Mm -hmm. Ash? Yeah. Oak? Yeah. Birch? Yeah. Pine? Wow. Endless, endless possibilities with this. All right, now they have their patented, I don't know if it's patented, Weber Craft system, which I'll get into in a second. Nine millimeter solid stainless steel cooking grates. And again, solid, nothing to complain about there. So here's our crafted system. So if you haven't seen the Weber Craft system, it basically sits under our cooking grates. And then we can put in our pizza stone inserts, our woks, our griddles. I think they sell probably a dozen different inserts that can set into this. So that's kind of handy. So you can slide that around. That's integrated with the grill too. So that's cool. Oh, I forgot to mention as far as the outside of the grill. Remember the old Summit? It had that chintzy, terrible handle light. And I'm like, guys, we're selling $3,000 grill and we're gonna put a plastic little handle light on it. In fact, roll the footage of me complaining about that. Introducing, for the first time ever in a Weber grill, brrr, a fully integrated, lit up hood space. Boom. Now that's what I'm talking about right there. Okay, but here's, the, here's the thing though. All jokes aside. All right, you can see I wasn't happy about it. Well, they put in interior lighting. So the lights, see that? The lights are on the handles. And they did educate me and let me know. Now tell, tell me if this is an important feature. They had mentioned that they did a lot of research into their, the, the hue of the lighting to make sure it's gonna make your steaks and stuff look the most attractive. Mm -hmm. Is that important to you? I want them to look good, but it's more important Is it a that selling feature? taste good. No. Yeah. I want it to taste good. I don't care yeah. what it looks like, unless I'm cooking for the, yeah. the president or something. Yeah. So that interior lighting is a big upgrade, I think, without that stupid plastic light on the front. So that's a nice improvement. And honestly, they should have had it the whole time. 
All right, now, you know I'm a big fan of these cast aluminum tubs. Now this is a big tub. So we got 36 inch tub, fully seamless. So this helps retain heat, even heat, and being seamless, it's gonna stand the test of time and you're not gonna have grease leaking out where it shouldn't, where the seams are, things like that. And this is solid, or maybe it's welded here on the top a little bit, I can't tell. Maybe not, we got a seam. Maybe it's all one piece, seems like it's all one piece, but it goes all the way up, that's kind of cool. So that's probably one of my favorite features about Weber, Weber and Napoleon are some of the only ones doing it, but that's a huge feature on how your grill is gonna perform. Really important. We have our flavorizer bars, which again, if you've watched my videos, you know that those work really well. All right, now Weber has their burner systems, their vertical burner systems. You guys have seen me review these before. Nothing to complain about with these, they work great. Now, again, I had some complaints with the ignition system and I got roasted in the comments section. I said, you know what I don't like about Weber's is you need two hands to light the grill. So you have to hold the knob in and then press the ignition button over here. And people just lit me up for that. And I'm like, you've never walked out to a grill holding a tray of food and need to light the burners. Of course, you probably like to preheat the grill ahead of time. Maybe, maybe it was justified. Anyways, there we go. Oh, see that? So check this out. How awesome is this? See the gas? So they add, again, go back and roll the footage of me complaining about this. The burners were not connected before, so they added this connector. So now, look at that. I didn't even ignite it. All I gotta do is turn the gas on See that? And it should connect itself. Let's see if this burner will catch the other one. Because now I'm just leaking gas out of this burner. Well, I had to ignite that one. And then see, but this one's shooting over. Let's try it. Oh, this is the uh, sear burner. Oh no, where's the sear burner? Oh no, that's the rotisserie. There we go. So see, I didn't even have to ignite it and it's catching. There, it's catching again. So there's our five burners on in action. So our burners are connected. So let's say the wind blew it out, check this out. See, that's cool. So they added that feature too. So that's, that's a nice little bonus. <coughs> All right. The last feature, and I think probably the, also I forgot to mention, now I'm thinking about it. This rotisserie guy folds and tucks away. It's nice that it tucks away and it works pretty good. So that's handy when you're not using it. Now you just have a fully flat side shelf. So I do like that. All right, now the biggest feature I think and the biggest performance difference, like the integrated lighting, is it is better uh, the grill only comes in one big size. I think that's better. The side shelves are bigger. That's better. The it burners self or each burner has its own individual igniter. That's better. The burners are connected. It's better. So there are some improvements, but so far I think these improvements are incremental. All right. Now this, in, this improvement or change, I guess you could call it, I think is the biggest change as far as the way the grill is going to perform. And that's their rotisserie system. So if you've watched any of my other videos, most of the time rotisseries are fairly useless unless you're using it for rotisserie. All right. Now my favorite grill on the market is Heston. They're a $10,000 gas grill and I love that their rotisserie system is built into the roof of the grill because you can double it as a broiler system. Well, Weber has done something similar, but see this here, it's up on the roof. Now, I've talked to several grill manufacturers at trade shows and things like this, and they said one of the reasons why no one else is really doing rotisseries on the roof is it's really, really hard to engineer 
to where you can have that rotisserie burner work in the roof. And I believe that. But you can see what Weber did is they didn't really engineer anything. They just mounted this infrared burner externally into the roof of the grill. So it's literally just screwed in and then kind of caged in a little bit. So aesthetically, I don't love the look that it's just poking out like that. Okay, so let's test this bad boy. Okay, so if you've watched any of my videos on infrared heat, it's instantaneous, hot, hot, hot. So I got my steak, got ourselves a New York strip. Let's put on this bad mama. Let's see how she does. Okay, start the timer. Got uh, 231. Look at that. All right, so what's really cool about a broiler versus um, the burner being underneath is there's no chance of any flare-ups, really, because you're cooking from the top. Now, with infrared burners, they usually don't flare up anyways, but it just totally eliminates that as an option. But look at this thing. This is in real time. We're at like two or three minutes. That's actually pretty stinking cool, huh? Should we flip this thing? Now, we're, we're trying to broil a steak, but you know where this broiler comes in really handy, I think, is like leftovers. Like pizza on a low setting, you don't want it that hot. Like pizza rolls or cinnamon roll, anything, you know? All right, let's go sample it. Smells good. If you want the world's best knives, steak knives, steel port knives, we sell them here. Okay. Nice crust, for sure. Mm. How'd we do? Little rare. Probably could have done another minute or so. But if you like rare, medium rare, mm. that crust is good. I cook all my steaks on infrared heat. That's the first Weber grill where I've gotten a crust that I like. Because normally they don't have good infrared heat for their steaks. I can't say that anymore. That broiler works. Really good. Mm. Okay, so I think the thing I'm most impressed with with this grill redesign by far is the rotisserie burner that can double as a broiler. Um, <clears throat> that is by far the biggest performance improvement that they made with this grill. Every other improvement they made, although better, is more incremental. Like I said, so as far as upgrades, we have the soft close storage drawers, we have the, uh, each burner has its own ignition system. We have the stowaway rotisserie system. We have the taller hood with the adjustable warming shelves. The burners are all connected now. We got backlit lighting on the knobs and of course, interior lighting. All of that stuff is better and it was much, much needed. In fact, it was late, but I'm glad we see it now. But here is the biggest question. Will it hold up against the other guys? For years, the last two or three years, I've been kind of dumping on Weber Summits. Like they don't even come close in my top fives in this $4,000 price range, four to $5,000 price range. Am I still gonna be able to say that? Or is it gonna sneak into the top five and really start putting a dent in the competition? Napoleon, Blaze, uh, Aspire by Heston's a little expensive. Some of those other models, the True Flames, things like that, Broil King. Where's it gonna hold up? Where's it gonna fit? I'm really, really excited to start doing my side-by-side -side reviews, and I'm really excited to get my hands on the Smart Grill, but overall, I will say it is much, much better than the old Summit. It's an easier shopping experience, there's not as much legwork to figure out what you need. The SKUs are simple. 
it's a better grill, refined, cleaner. I think it's still a little chintzy in some areas like the side shelves and some, some of the components on the burners, or I'm sorry, on the, on the pedestal, but it's a really rock solid grill. Can't say I have a lot of complaints about it outside of where's it gonna fall compared to its competitors. Weber Summit, come down to Embers. You can check it out here. We'll see you guys next time.